Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm Sarah, and I'm one of the residential staff members here at Wesley. I have a few announcements for you guys. Coming up on Wednesday, we have Wednesday night dinner. Make sure to reserve your box on fsuwesley.com. On Monday, tune in to our Instagram to watch our Monday motivations. If you would like to watch others, go to our IGTV to see all of them archived. Coming up, we have some fun, spoopy fall fresh things at Wesley. On the night before Halloween, October 30th at 8 p.m., we have Halloween movie night. Come out for a fun time. In the comments below, drop down your favorite spooky movie and have a great worship moment. Well, like every week, I want to thank the band for the good work that they do. I, I don't know that we really have ever said this. I, I think we throw up some thank you slides and stuff at the end, at the end of the videos. But uh, the work that the band puts in um, and the tech team behind it every single week is pretty great. Um, 
we had this kind of crazy idea to do these worship moment things as long as we can't be in person. And, and some of our questions were like, how are we going to accomplish this? And, and uh, how are we going to have a band? Um, every single person that is played in the band that you have seen over this past semester was not involved in the band previously. Uh, we basically started from scratch here. And, and all of them have been awesome at scheduling at crazy times. We don't start rehearsal until like nine o'clock and we're getting out of here close to midnight uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays just to prep, to prep for this sort of thing. And so anyway, I just want to say thank you to the band. And um, if you know any of them and, and you think they've done a good job, I think they've done an amazing job. Uh, just say a word of thank you and, and praise to them. Uh, I want to read tonight from Psalms 57. Uh, when I was in seminary, uh, I took an Old Testament class, and if you've ever taken one of those classes, uh, there's a lot of content in it. And in seminary, you know, I studied music in undergrad, and so uh, when it came to seminary classes, I was very unprepared, let's put it that way. I had a, a, a few religion courses under my belt, but I was, you know, nowhere prepared enough um, to study uh, the way that you do in seminary. And this Old Testament class that I had uh, was two semesters. It was the first half of the Hebrew Bible, and which is, you know, our Old Testament, and then the second half of the Hebrew Bible. And then the middle is the Psalms. And if you know anything about Scripture, the Psalms of David, and they call them the Psalms of David, but Psalms, uh, end up in the center of our Scriptures. In fact, physically within your Bible, uh, because the New Testament is so short, they're actually literally in the center of your Bible. If you open up straight to the center of of a Bible, you will most likely be to the Psalms. And one of the challenges that my uh, professor had us do, you know, as we would study the Old Testament, we would read through a passage before we would study it in class. And, and in between those two semesters, between fall and spring, we had the Psalms that fell there. And, and she gave us an assignment over the Christmas break to, to say, read the Psalms and pray through the Psalms. Uh, to be honest with you, the, the idea of praying through the Psalms seems kind of weird. I grew up in a, in a church where you just, you know, extemporaneously pray. There was no sort of read prayer. So that was a new idea to me. But she said, read through the Psalms. And so that was our assignment. And to be honest with you, I did like, uh, let's say 75% of it. I didn't read every Psalm over that break, but I did read a lot of them. And, and they're meant to be read as prayers. They're meant to be read as prayers and songs of worship. And uh, most of them are attributed to David. Um, but I want to read tonight from Psalm 57. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me, because I have taken refuge in you. I take refuge in the shadow of your wings until destruction passes me by. I call out to God most high, to God who comes through for me. He sends orders from heaven and saves me, rebukes the one who tramples me, and God sends his loyal love and faithfulness. There's a little bit of contextual information that would be helpful here as we read this. David is famous for being a king. David is famous for being a king right after King Saul. In fact, Saul and David have a uh, not a great relationship uh, toward the end of Saul's reign and the beginning of David's reign, particularly because the scriptures tell us that God's favor had been with David. It had moved from Saul to David, and, and that bothered Saul. That's probably a good lesson for us to learn. Anytime power uh, is is disrupted, and power is used to having uh, power and energy behind it, and then it's disrupted because it moves to somebody else. There's going to be anger and wrath and frustration in that. You know, let's say that you took a country, for instance, right, that uh, was more or less ruled by one race or one color of people, and, and yet somehow over time the minorities became more of a majority and a certain race of people felt uh, threatened by that. I mean, that, that's kind of what happens whenever power gets disrupted. And that's the same thing that happens with Saul. When Saul finds out that David's going to be king, that God's favor is found in David, and all of a sudden Saul feels a threat. Saul tracks down David. Saul wants to kill and murder David. I mean, there's no question about this. Saul runs with an army for David's armies, and David is on the run. And for, for many, many, many times that Saul is, is pursuing David, David hides in things like caves, things, things where he could find refuge from those who seek to trample him 
and destroy him. So that's what happens. And in fact, I think it was Augustine who talked about this. This is a, a early leader, Augustine, who talked about this very psalm, and he wrote a, an interpretation on a lot of the psalms. This very psalm, and he talks about David running into a cave. Now, a part of this story you need to know is David is running from Saul. Saul ends up going back to the Philistines and then coming back toward David. He's trying to find David to kill David. And so he's looking for David, back and forth, back and forth. They're going through this, and David seeks rest refuge in a cave. And it's within that cave that David hides with his people and Saul ends up entering into, the scripture tells us in 1 Samuel, Saul enters into this cave so that he could, nah, let's say go to the bathroom. And so he's going to the bathroom and David has the opportunity, David has the opportunity to kill Saul in that moment and he chooses not to. Why? Because he sees that that cave has provided him refuge and that was provided to him from God. And so David uses that opportunity, that reality, that recognition that God had given him this refuge to say, you know what, I'm going to take the higher road and the opportunity that I have to kill Saul, I won't take. Refuge is an important thing. And it's something that I recognize that a lot of us just don't have in these days. We don't often have a place to go. In fact, I remember being in college and, and you, you, know, you generally have your first roommate in college and sometimes it's somebody you know, hopefully it is, but sometimes it's not. And there's all kinds of roommate issues and disagreements and all that sort of thing uh, as we go through the college experience. But one of the things about college that you have to realize as you have a roommate is that there's not necessarily a place for you to go just to hide away from the world. You know, There's not a place for you to seek refuge away from everything that's going on. And so in the college environment, we learn to navigate that a little bit. That idea of refuge is sometimes really hard to find. I have realized that in, in the technological world that we live in. I, I carry a phone and a watch on me at all times, and it constantly notifies me. The students make fun of me all the time because uh, my watch goes off all the time or my phone goes off all the time. I was actually in this room kind of setting up some of these lights earlier this week, and, and uh, one of our students said, uh, you ding a lot. And I was like, yeah, that's so true. Like, There's no way for me to escape these like wrath and notifications because it's it's just abundant, uh, and, and every time I to try to turn them off or whatever, there, there's more apps or more messages or whatever. It's really hard to seek refuge in today's world. And I've been struck by the political reality that we're living in in these days. We often turn to politics to fix whatever's going on in our world. If we see uh, the, the travesty of racism, we turn to politics. Uh, if we see the uh, tragedy of poverty, we turn to politics. We are always searching for that new leader in our life that will fix all of our issues, fix all of our problems. And inevitably, we always end up back in the same place that we have been for so long, seeking refuge in the wrong places. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a relatively political person. Uh, if you've ever seen my dumpster fire of a Facebook account, you have seen that on display. It's not always a great thing. And in a lot of senses, I think this is important. It was uh, Karl Barth, who was a famous theologian, who, who said that the, the preacher should preach with a Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. I mean, the preacher should not be silent about what's going on in the world. And, and certainly Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the work of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in, in the World War II, too, would be an example of where this is true, where a preacher has to speak into the world that's around it. So I don't necessarily think that that's bad, but there are some difficulties there because sometimes we can present a truth that's maybe not the gospel truth, right? We are saying, hey, if, if we elect this person or, or if we turn away from this thing, then all of a sudden everything will be okay. And the truth is God's saying that I am your refuge. That's what David realizes when he's in the cave. He's in the cave away from Saul. Saul is trying to kill him, murder him. Saul is trying to do bad things to David. And David simply says, you are my refuge, God. You gave me refuge. One of my um, heroes in life uh, is a, an artist who's no longer alive named Rich Mullins. And uh, after he passed away, he died in a kind of a tragic accident. After he passed away, there was a lot of uh, work being done about his life and these random, you know, 
recordings that got released and uh, that sometimes were just recorded on little recorders or whatever. I mean, they were not professional recordings, but it was really good to hear his insight into the world. And there's, there's one that just always sticks in my mind where he's, he's talking about all the times in our lives where we turn to everything else to fix the problems. We turn to this, we turn to this, we turn to this, we turn to politics, we turn to sex, we turn to our friends. We turn to all of the, the things that, that, can, that can frustrate us uh, and will always leave a hole in our lives. We turn to those things. You know, we've got a, a square-shaped hole, and we're putting a round peg in it, and there's going to be emptiness there. And what he says is, like, stop relying on the government. This government cannot do it, so stop depending on the government. Educational systems cannot do it, so stop trusting educational systems. The church was chosen by God. The church is the body that God has ordained to take care of you. The church is the body that will provide refuge for you. And for those of you who are watching this who are Wesley students, I want you to know, and I've said this many times and I'll continue to say it, Wesley will be a refuge for you. If you feel like you've been turned away by the world, Wesley will be a refuge for you. And for those of you who are maybe a parent or, or just somebody who's just checking in and, and wanting to check in and see what's going on in Wesley, and so you're here tonight, first of all, thank you for being here. But maybe the church has not always been a refuge for you. Uh, and maybe you've sometimes looked for something else. Let me encourage you in this, that the church is the place where God dwells. And so in the times where we feel overwhelmed and we feel overburdened and we feel like there's never going to be a way out with anything uh, political or anything governmental or anything educational or whatever, we feel like there might not be a way out. Let me encourage you that the church is here and it will be a refuge. And it may not have been in the past, but its calling, its purpose in life is to be a refuge because that's where God dwells. And so I hope that you vote during this time. I mean, I think as, as Americans, we sometimes take for granted the fact that we are all given this ability to vote. Uh, and so I hope that you do vote. But, but, but let me encourage you that when you vote, don't just assume that if you elect this person or this person or this person, everything's going to be okay. Because it's not going to be okay. Because this person or this person or this person can't handle it. They're not going to fix it. But instead, if we would turn toward God, we would find and seek our refuge in God. That God would protect us from our enemies that God would protect us from injustice, that God would protect us, and we would place our faith and our hope in that refuge instead of something else, we might have the words that David has in these scriptures. We might have these words to say, praise you, O God, because you are my refuge. You have given us strength. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us to run to you when so often we want to run everywhere else. Gracious God, be with us uh, as we go through this week, as we go through this tumultuous time called an election. God, keep us fast. Hold us close. Be that refuge and that shelter that we so often need. And in the times when we turn our backs, God, we ask for your forgiveness. God, be with us. We love you and we praise you. Amen.